There are no audio recorders allowed up here on the table. There are video distribution sites across the tunnel. Before you ask your question, we will bring the mic around to you. Uh, and uh, we just ask that you identify yourself by name and affiliation before asking your question and that you wait for the mic. Uh, we will uh, start with uh, questions for our student athletes only after a opening statement by Coach Morris. Also for the locker rooms, after a 10-minute cooling off period after the game has ended, both locker rooms are open for 30 minutes. So Coach, if you'd like, we'll start with an opening statement. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, extremely proud of our team and the way we competed in the second half. Um, I thought we were a little uncharacteristic in the first half in terms of ball movement, uh, executing offense, and you know, kind of staying true to who we were defensively. And you know, at halftime, you know, we let them be for about five or six minutes. And you know, I think they figured out as we came in as coaches in the locker room at halftime, um, you know, they looked like they understood what they needed to do in the second half. And tremendously gutty effort by these guys, uh, execution of offense, coming up with stops, coming up with rebounds, really pressuring. Uh, Florida Gulf Coast not allowing them to make threes in the second half. Um, you know, I didn't even look at a stat sheet the, the, entire, the entire second half, but I didn't realize they shot three for 11 because they made their first two. Uh, so they finished one for their last nine, which is pretty impressive by our defense. And, um, you know, just really proud of these guys and happy to be continuing to play. Questions for our student athletes only. Yeah, here in the back, Tim. Yeah, Tim May, Columbus Dispatch. Lucky, talk about that little swing where you guys finally took the lead. Did you, were you feeling lucky at that point? <laughs> oh, sorry, man. No, um, no, I wasn't really feeling that much lucky, but uh, I just felt the game swing into our hands. You know, the basketball game is full of, run, full of runs, and um, I think we just took our time, you know, felt them getting on their heels, and we just had to take it stop by stop and, you know, get the best shot for our team. You're on the aisle. Lucky, uh, Rob Rossi, Pittsburgh Tribune Review. How much more satisfying is this season now that you guys are moving on to the round of 64? Nobody's talking about a play-in game. They're actually going to be talking about an NCAA tournament game in most people's minds. Um, we're not that much satisfied, but you know, we are very blessed and um, you know fortunate to be here. Uh, just got to give our hats off to this team. You know, we fought through adversity. You know, we was down six to going into halftime. You know, no pressure at all. We just had to stick together. You know, they played probably their best basketball in the first half. Alley oops, you know, transition threes. Bo Beach shot it tremendously tonight. You know, we just stuck together and made sure that we got the stop that we needed to turn this game around. Here in the front. Rodney, this question's for you. I looked at you in the second half and you had a big smile on your face. It looked like you were enjoying the game. What was going through your mind there? We made sure coming into halftime that we still had to remember this is a blessing to be out here, so we had to enjoy the moment. And uh, guys were, had their heads down and things like that, but uh, we just reiterated having fun and going out and uh, playing with enjoyment. Right here. Uh, Jonah Rosen, Bloom Pioneer Press. Uh, Lucky, uh, you've obviously been here longer. These two uh, new to the team and new to the offense this year, really. What have they added? I mean, obviously they, they were huge tonight and then all season for you guys. What have they kind of added as a scoring punch? Um, they, they score tremendously, you know, in different varieties, you know, whether they're making threes or, you know, step back jump shots or going to the paint, you know, getting the other team bigs in foul trouble. You know, they do a tremendous job of just picking what the defense gives them. You know, they've been playing, you know, this way for the last six, seven games. So I hope they keep it up and, you know, we'll see what happens next game. Turn right. Marquise, you uh, struggled to find the bottom of the net early in the game. What kind of got you going in the second half? And and you know, really found your scoring touch. Uh, my teammates, they uh, just kept talking to me throughout the game, kept motivating me and said, "We need you to score so we can win this game." So uh, pick your head up and just continue to play your game. We're gonna be fine, and that's exactly what I did. Front left. Megan Ryan, Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Lucky, there was a moment in the second half when you guys finally had your lead in hand, where you looked at the crowd, you like let out this big Tarzan scream, beat your chest. It's a very one shining moment esque moment. <laughs> um, what was going through your mind at that point, and did you kind of feel like this was finally when everything was going right? I just felt that the game had turned into our hands. You know, we've been struggling the whole first half. You know, really wasn't playing together. You know, really didn't have the great body language. But I felt, you know, once we got that stop that really turned around the game. You know, I felt it and I was just proud. You know, I let all my anger and emotion and, you know, everything else that I had inside my body, just I just let it free. Go here and then Rusty. Yeah, Steven Gertz, Mid-Major Madness. 
Uh, lucky, you know, you guys went into the halftime, you know, down 29 to 35 against St. Francis Brooklyn the last time you were on the court. You know, how much confidence did it give you knowing that you had won a game pretty much in that exact situation? Uh, that was the model going into the second half. You know, that's all we, uh, Rodney, you know, Kayvon, uh, Dave, and that's all we we spoke about in the second half is, you know, we've been down six before in a hostile environment, you know, small gym, you know, six points, two possession game, maybe even three possession, but we know we, we didn't play our best basketball. And all we had to do is, you know, just maintain, stay together, and just go out there and have fun. I think we did that to the best of our abilities. Rusty, on the right. Uh, yesterday, your coach, this is Rusty Miller from AP. Yesterday, your coach said that it was almost like Duke had its own TV channel, that you couldn't avoid Duke. Well, now you're not going to avoid them. I'm just wondering, you've seen them, I assume you've seen them play. What do you think now about your chances? Um, I like my chance. I like our chances very well, you know. At the end of the day, it's a team game. You know, no matter who they have on their team, no matter how many TV games they have, you know, I love Robert Morris. And, you know, our coaches put in a lot of work. You know, they, they know the scouting report. They make sure that we know the plays inside and out. You know, we know their tendencies. So we just got to go out there and just believe in ourselves, have confidence, and have fun, and just go out there and see what happens. We've got time for two more questions. Paul in the back. Paul Gotham, Pick and Splinters. Lucky, uh, you mentioned Bo Beach. What was your approach to him defensively in the second half? Um, Coach Stool screaming at me, saying, uh, can't let him slide by me. You know, I, I really had to focus in on defense in the second half because <clears throat> he shot it. He shot it very well. You know, six eight, got a high arc and release. You know, is fantastic player. You know, can score in a variety of ways. But I know that I had confidence in myself, and I knew my team had confidence in me just to make sure it, it got harder on him in the second half. Time for one more question. We're in front, last one. Uh, Joan Rosen, Bloom Pioneer Press. Uh, with 8.50 to go, you guys, uh, Rodney steps up the top of the arc, hits a three-pointer. Uh, you guys were down six at that point. It seems like you guys couldn't miss a shot afterwards. How much confidence can just one shot, one three like that, generate for the rest of the game? Marquise, can you answer that, please? Uh, usually when one of us hits shots, like that motivates the other person to uh, get going. So when Rodney hit a shot, that motivates Lucky to hit his next shot, or that motivate me. So when somebody step up and hit a big shot like that, that just give us so much momentum going forward. All right, Marquise, Rodney, Lucky, thank you for your time. Good luck in the next round against Duke. Now we will uh, open up the floor for questions for Coach Tool here in the front. Uh, Megan Ryan, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Coach, uh, yesterday you had mentioned that with Rodney and Lucky and Marquise, if they split the pie three ways, you know, exactly evenly, it's going to work out OK. They pretty much did that tonight. How important were they to your win? Well, obviously, you know, it's hard to guard all three of them. And I thought in the first half, those three guys, along with everybody else that touched the ball, was trying to make a play for themselves. And we had no flow offensively. We weren't moving the ball. You know, we were going one pass, jump shot. You know, at halftime, we talked about sharing the ball, playing together. You know, we had three assists and four turnovers at the half. We end with 11 and five. So, you know, eight and one in the second half is, is pretty good. Uh, eight assists on 16 field goals is what we want to be. And, and, um, I thought guys played unselfishly. I thought guys executed offense. I thought they had a nice uh, flow of when to take advantage of a, a break situation and when to step it out and run offense. And um, when you do that and you have good players who will work together, you end up shooting a high percentage. And obviously, we did in the second half. Here in the aisle. Uh, Rob Rossi, Tribune Review. Andrew, you talked yesterday about you know when you went to the tournament as a player, uh, you wanted to enjoy it uh, a little bit more, given how far your team has come knowing that they're going to get to enjoy a similar experience, that sort of opening weekend in addition to this, how much more satisfying does that make this season? Uh, you know what? This was our opening game. Um, and, and, you know, the city of Dayton has been absolutely outstanding. You know, this is my fifth opportunity to be a part of the tournament, and this might be the best one we've had regardless of the win. Before the game was even thrown up, the way we've been treated, uh, the way our guys going into restaurants, uh, riding the bus, our hotel, people coming up to us, congratulating us, you know, I've been in Boston, I've been in Providence, I've been in Minneapolis. It, it wasn't that way. And so, you know, you can't tell me that this wasn't our opening game tonight. Um, and our guys really responded. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy for them that they were able to overcome, you know, a, a not very good first half to pull out a win. And excited to see what tomorrow and Friday will hold. And I think that's the only way we can look at it. Here in front. 